Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio, where you will learn about an issue minus the BS. We don't always say what you want to hear, but what you need to hear about the issues of the day. Here's your host, Inger, along with Elmo, with his political insight and commentary. I'm Inger, he's Elmo, and this is Brutally Honest Talk Radio. How are you doing today, Elmo? I'm brimming with enthusiasm. <laughs> enthusiasm, uh-oh. <laughs> You're doing any better, you be twins, huh? Yeah, I'd be beside <laughs> myself. You'd be beside yourself. <laughs> Cool. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in today. It's been, I know, um, the inauguration happened on, I think, last Wednesday or so. So this is, um, tomorrow will be officially his first week as president. So uh, we can jump right in. Where would you like to start? Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome everybody for joining us and coming back. Uh, Strap in because we got a lot for you and uh, a great show. So, We're going to start with talking about uh, Biden's trillion dollar tax plan, 1.9 trillion to be exact, 1.9 trillion, $1,400 checks going to most Americans, 130 billion to reopen schools. 160 billion to build national vaccine program slash boost testing so um first thing i'll say is is it going to cost 130 billion dollars to get the schools back to where they were one year ago is Mm -hmm. that what we're is that is that is that cost 130 billion is that what the money is needed for and if if it does cost that much why you know, that's, that's yeah. my first question. That's a very good question. I know from the initial CARES funding, the way it was distributed, it was coming from the federal government, obviously, and mm-hmm. then down to the state level and then down to the county level. And then the school systems appealed to the county for the funding that they needed and they had to list out, you know, what they need the funds for, like maybe for um, PPE or Wi-Fi hotspots, or computers, or that sort of thing. So that's how that okay. flushed out. Um, and the county then had to itemize, not only had to itemize where the money went and report it back to the federal government, but if there was any left, kind of let them know where everything stood. So that's how the schools did it at the first CARES Act, at the initial CARES Act funding. Um I don't know now that they need that much more to open schools because some schools are already open. They're already open and some are doing the hybrid in, in class and online. And um, it seems like they've got it kind of pretty much down pat how to do this since they've been doing it for a year now, if you can believe it, almost a year. It'll be a year in March. They've been doing this for a year. 10 months. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know that they need $130 billion to figure out how to reopen schools that are either already reopened or have determined that they're going to do a hybrid approach. So that's a good question. I'm trying to understand the logic (laughs) because if I close my doors, if I close the doors to my restaurant or my house and then want to open them back up to open them back up, I need to get money like, Whatever whatever was needed to run school or have a typical day at school, they already had that. You know, I mean, they may need routers or Wi-Fi equipment. They might want to upgrade or do that. Why doesn't somebody give an account of where all the money went for all the schools that didn't have to pay an electric bill because they didn't have to turn the lights on? No heat, no air, no food. Where did that money go? Right. Right. And I, I mean, don't and I don't think your tax bill for the school portion went down. I know mine didn't. 
even right. though they weren't there, oh, we were no. still paying the same amount. So that's a very good question. Where did the money yeah. for the fixed expenses, like you said, the utilities and, and the janitors and that's where did that money go? That's a very good question. Well, you know, some of these people, if you were to take their pockets and pull them inside out, you get a magnifying glass and you look at the lining, you'll see that it's a E pluribus unum <laughs> on the lining of the pockets of many of these people that are working for our illustrious school system (laughs) exactly and and uh, i think up north there are i want to say maybe illinois that the teachers don't want to go back into the classroom okay because the the government or whoever has said okay it's time for you to go back yes that was a political move but it's time to go back and (laughs) <laughs> is that because they want to sit on the couch and eat sugar corn pops or because they fear for their life from catching COVID-19 from somebody in the building? Did they say why they, did anybody say why they, they didn't want to go back? They'll tell you that they feared for their lives and you're sending the teachers off to their deaths if you make them go back into the classroom. That's what they'll tell yeah. you. But now, but the union is telling them that I guess the teachers oh. union up there is telling them you better not go back. So as a result, no one's going back and the kids are being held hostage. So, um, yeah, that's a, yeah, I, that's a 130 billion. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I forgot about the unions. That's the, that's the worst part of the school system mm-hmm. is the unions. So that's, that's one thing. Um, mm-hmm. And then $1,400 checks to go to most Americans. Like that, that makes up the difference. So let, let's do a little bit of math here. $130 billion to reopen schools, $160 billion to build national vaccine program. That's $290 billion. And then so we got over $1.5 trillion left. Well, the rest of it is going to... In individuals, families, fourteen hundred dollars. So we're in the end of January now. Mm-hmm. Two short months ago, l- less than two months ago, the, the Congress was talking about sending out stimulus checks, and Trump was saying six hundred dollars. That's not enough. Yes, that's not enough. I want to give out. I, I wanted to be two thousand. Mm-hmm. I sure wanted to be two thousand dollars. That's what Trump said, and they yes. blocked him. Yes. Right. Next right. thing you know, the next uh, phase of stimulus checks that rolled out were at um, twelve twelve hundred, or most people are getting twelve hundred dollars. So now you hear Ocasio Cortez and some other Democrats saying, "No, no. Well, it, it, that wasn't enough. We want two thousand dollars." So. It's like, oh, okay, well, well, if it was twelve hundred, then we'll send out an additional eight hundred. She's like, no, no, we want one check that says two thousand on it. You know, mm-hmm. try to use math and logic. Now, when you add it up, as two thousand. No, we're not. The first check doesn't count. <laughs> okay, that doesn't count. Now we need we need to see a check with a comma. This is <laughs> two grand on it. I mean, look, it hasn't been that hasn't been that long ago. So, and anybody can see if you do the math, you're gonna end up having thirty two hundred dollars, or, mm-hmm. or whatever, uh, was clearly more more than two thousand. Like it has to be all in in one in one check. Mm-hmm. This is this is what this is what some of the Democrats are saying. Uh, with that, I wonder. What happened to you? Because again, people got there. I think it was twelve hundred for a couple, but six hundred dollars for each individual. That went out. I think right before Trump was done and out of office. Um, but mm-hmm. where did that other money go? Remember, he listed out um, that part of that money was going to study some fish in the Gulf of Mexico. It was going overseas to Pakistani gender studies. Um, a lot of frivolous spending. So. With that, the American people got six hundred dollars, and those money still went to all those frivolous spending items on the first one. And now, is this a new one point nine trillion 
that they're going to yeah. print, obviously. An additional, just print <laughs> an additional 1.9 trail. Gosh. And again, yeah. where is the where is it going? I'm sure there's some there's some pork in there. And we just <sighs> won't know until we have to pay it back. <laughs> this there's a there's a video uh abc did write a news story on this and the the reporter was saying well some of the talk from people around the country is we don't need to quibble about the amount of money that it is that's like standing outside and your house is burning with the house being the government and we say well maybe the firefighters shouldn't come and put out the fire because then it'll do water damage to the house no, that's not quite no, the same the thing. S- no. <laughs> so it, it, if you if you want to compare apples to apples and make an analogy, mm-hmm. you want to balance the budget. Like right. you want to have something you want to have something that puts out to put out the fire is to make it because we're we're already have been spending more than we're making just as mm-hmm. a country. We already have been doing that for years. Yes. Yes, we have. And that's, uh, we keep digging that hole deeper and deeper. Um, Aside from the fact that the states have a constitutional amendment that they must have a balanced budget and they cannot overspend. But the federal government clearly does not have that and definitely needs that. But eventually the bill's going to come due. Um, You can't keep printing money and inflation's going to be out of the, you know, it's going to skyrocket. You know, and for folks who don't understand inflation, just think, um, Something that's very rare, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is very rare, very valuable piece of piece of art. Now, think if you had, if every household had a Mona Lisa <laughs> in it, then all of a sudden that Mona Lisa is not worth a whole lot. That's the same with inflation. You keep printing yeah. money, and it becomes less valuable. So um, that's where we're headed if we don't get a handle on this somehow. We have got to get a handle on it. So, um, yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'll, I'll be interesting to interested to see all of the other, um, all the other spending that's in that particular package. Be interested to see that. Yeah, and uh, this, these topics uh, seem to be naturally transitioning pretty well. Uh, just, you know, I didn't, I didn't plan on it, but uh, you know, the next thing that I was thinking of that I wanted to talk about was. Uh, the the news that came out, there's a research study showing that countries who had the mandatory lockdowns, mm-hmm. forcing people to stay at home, quarantine, and closing businesses and restaurants. Mm-hmm. This this is this is looking at the world stage, looking over the whole planet. And it's fair to do that because it's a pandemic. It's all over the world. There is no country that coronavirus has not touched. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you could say big or small. It really doesn't matter because it gets down to percentages. Yes. All right. So the, the study showed that all of these countries did worse than the countries that opened up and let people go about their business. In other words, the people that said, Hey, we know it's dangerous out there, but get in your car and drive anyway with a seatbelt on and be mm-hmm. cautious and safe. Instead of people say, well, 50,000 people a year get killed in America in auto accidents, so don't drive. Right. Stay at home. It's dangerous out there. It's cars killing people. Y'all need right. to stay at home. Yeah. All right. So this is like, th- this is proven. This is proven. And two two examples, two of these countries are uh, South Korea and Sweden, okay. which Sweden is, is one of the countries that we featured in another uh, study, you know, sp- specifically about them and how well they were doing in their economy. Uh, people were, well, I, I didn't have the video of this, but the story that I was doing, people were on the subway sitting right next to each other, no masks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but it's like if you if you have a cold or cough, you know, you have that you can wear a mask, you know. Yes. Y- yes. You don't cough in your hand and then shake somebody's hand. Right. Y- you you kind of do. It's 99 percent of the same common sense things that people are already doing. Yes. Yes. And um, yeah, 
and the the mandates. I think there was a study that came out. I want to say either today or yesterday, mm-hmm. where children are you now getting really depressed because they're not allowed to associate and that sort of thing, and and group and have relationships with their friends and that sort of thing because of this pandemic that originated in China. Yeah, yeah that's let's just call it what it is. Um, and they're not able to, um, you know, I, I just think that, again, the kids need to get together and take precaution. Yeah, you don't lock down the kids. They're they're fine. They'll be okay. But just take precautions. And it doesn't need to be mandated. If, if people feel better not wearing a mask or wearing one, they should have the choice to do that. You know, there's just, you know, locking down healthy people. <laughs> it's the same right, as it's right. like your analogy you know you know you can't drive because cars kill people i spoke to one of my one of my kids uh last week they're uh they're twins and in eighth grade and i i try to have one-on-one time with one of my children every week like a different <laughs> a different child so you know we're talking about a lot of stuff and um you know my son was with me on this this time, he said that uh, the coach from his football team asked him if he wanted to play on the baseball team. And, you know, we were talking about that and when tryouts are and everything. And, you know, I was just I, 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 I see them and I observe and notice being at home every day. It's like being at home means more for a kid when he's in school all day and then comes home. It's like, Mm -hmm. now I'm home, I'm free, I can relax or whatever. But, you know, uh, you could pick the finest hotel, the Waldorf Astoria or the Ritz-Carlton, you know, the penthouse. However great it is, I wouldn't want to be mandated to stay in there. Right. You know, 90% Mm -hmm. of the time. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I get around more than they do, of course, because I have a car and I'm able to go out and run errands or just have time off to venture out. And, you know, 90% of their time, it's even though they go outside and play and their friends on the block, it's the same thing with them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you could just see that they're, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to say uh, cabin fever, but it's just that the, the mundaneness and how unnatural yeah. it is, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, to to do that so you know i take them to the park even if yes. they play the same sports the same thing just to get away your mind and your eyes need to see um need to see a new environment mm-hmm. need to see a new setting is just healthy for you mm-hmm. you know and also just uh social interaction that comes with being in school and being around other students Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you hit it on the nail on the head when you said the mundaneness of it all. Yeah. And that's what it is. That's what it is. And they'll appreciate home more when they're not there all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very true. 14 million people vaccinated now. Okay. All right. 14 million shots given around the country from different uh, uh, drug stores and pharmacies. And some of it is maybe community or local or government uh, rolling this rolling this out, and then of course the healthcare workers, the essential uh, doctors and nurses who are constantly coming in contact with uh, patients, just people, even mm-hmm. even even people that uh, don't have it, they they are a threat. You know, it, it's like it bounces around. Mm-hmm. Right. So it can come from someone that does have it and infect a doctor or a nurse and then they pass it on easily to someone who doesn't have it, but is in the hospital. And uh, by them having other complications, their immune system is weaker and they're more susceptible to it. So yeah. they've gotten it also. But 14 million people so far have gotten it mm-hmm. now. Toward the end of Trump's term, you heard people saying, what were they calling it? Like a super fast uh, 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 solution or virus that they came up with. 
Oh, the Operation Warp Speed is that? Warp Speed, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It developed mm-hmm. it too soon. Usually, it takes years to come up with such a thing. All right, two short months later, now we're 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 gonna vaccinate a hundred million people in the first hundred days. days. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it was still less than a year. Yeah, kind of a kind of a contradiction there, you know. Yes. Uh, and it's I, I'm not I'm not. Uh, this isn't because of Trump. Trump didn't do this. He didn't make this in a laboratory. But sometimes as a president, you got to get out of the way. Yes. And let the people in the country have the freedom that they're supposed to have to let that well-oiled machine go to work. Mm-hmm. All right. And that's what he did. So it's just speaking to some people that no matter what you do, you can't please them. What they're talking about. Mm-hmm. We they they came up with it too soon, and tying it to Trump, and then the same people I've heard people say three hundred thousand people died on Trump's clock, you know, while yes. he was in office. Yes. All right. Again, that's not that's that's not his fault too. He's not God. He can't control and and keep people alive. And people mm-hmm. people are going to see with Biden in there that a president can't stop people from dying. You know. <laughs> Exactly. Just, just in case, just in case they didn't know that, and they actually thought that the, the next guy was going to be an answer to their prayers and a messiah and someone who was going to come in and kill the COVID and send him in like Rambo on a mission. <laughs> All right. Exactly. So it, it is it is because of the ball that Trump got rolling mm-hmm. and what he was, you know, he's he's working. He's working with them and find out what they need. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And um yeah, that and that's what folks were CNN and those folks were still every so and so this many people died under President, you know, today because of President Trump. Well, you can say the same thing for Biden. Okay, fifty thousand people yeah. died under Biden. You know. Right. Like eh, so <laughs> it's like that possibly would have happened anyway yeah. without regard to who is in elected office the bottom line is this stuff we've got to get like say get people vaccinated if people choose to take the vaccination and to get get it out there to them that's it so yeah that that's the exact same number i was thinking of all right which Mm -hmm. fifty thousand, which is down way low from what it was last year without anything to fight with exactly. oh my goodness look at what happens when you go into war and you go into battle with actual weapons and mm-hmm. shields look at what happens right but <laughs> with the with the best that they can do you know what whatever whatever happens because you, you're not going to you're not going to completely knock this thing out and then already we see 14 million okay we still got over 300 million to go if the, exactly at least <laughs> right at least. so with with that and it's still being in the in the middle of a winter and the middle of the flu season 2000 uh, uh 2021 i, I would say there's going to be uh at least at least 50,000 that die from covid this year you know after biden took office mm-hmm. at, at no fault at no fault of his his exactly Exactly. So, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not going to be one of these people that say, you know, at the end of this year, well, 50,000 people died on Biden's clock. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not I'm not even I'm I'm not even looking at that. I'm I'm not I'm not uh making it political and many many other people are they are have the same way saying the same ex- thing. Exactly. They have politicized this pandemic to no end. And this is something that should not be politicized. Period. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, so right. Stupid. Putting people's health and lives mm-hmm. at stake, jeopardizing that for the acquisition of power. Exactly. To try to take over a political office is shameful. It really is. They it should be embarrassed. They should be embarrassed. It really is. Yeah. So so we'll see um what ha- what happens. But yeah, it was politicized early on. A lot of people said, well, I didn't like the way Trump handled the pandemic. How was he supposed to have handled it? Right, that? with no suggestions. Yeah, the exactly. People that, the people that say that, you know. Yeah, don't yeah. give me a problem without a solution. 
And, and don't tell me that you don't have a solution because obviously you do because you see the problem and you see how to fix it. So, and, and when it, <laughs> when a person hates somebody, they're they're not gonna like the way they handle anything. That's true. <laughs> you that's know? true. And Orange then, man, bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's all it was. <laughs> I want to I want to make like an isolated statement, not even trying to segue this. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say something real quick. Okay, I do not trust MSNBC. I don't trust anything that comes out of their mouth. Okay. All right. What, why? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I was gonna say if people mm -hmm. really wanted to know, they could. <laughs> they could email okay. me. Okay. I, I did talk about oh. this on a previous episode. Give but, a teaser. Um, <laughs> so basically, they 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 didn't even admit it. An outside agency, I think it was Fox, which I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, another uh, another news network or media company showed that they lied. Mm -hmm. They are. They are journalism liars in the purest form. Wow. Okay. What I mean by that is by editing and cutting out things that would implicate the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And uh, just just trying to get people to engage with us. If you if you want to know more more detail about this, or if you may be a fan of MSNBC and you're gonna watch them tonight, uh, email us and I'll I'll tell you why, and I can even send you the proof of it. So, Good deal. Good just deal. just wanted to say that because MSNBC is still a thing; they still exist, <laughs> so it's still relevant. Great. Great. <laughs> Man. Wow. Yeah. It must have been a glaring example for you to be like hold up i mean just not something sly or anything they were just yeah. blatant and outright with it apparently I, okay there's no they, they had to go out of their way to edit oh, this gosh. thing to wow. make it look to make it look like a lie and then they commented on what you're seeing wow <laughs> <laughs> do you know uh, did, or well, let me put it like this did you hear about uh several years ago somebody tried to sue CNN because of something that they said that was um, not not slander but uh, misinformation mm -hmm. right about somebody or an entity and they tried to sue them and uh, went to court and there was a hearing and basically CNN was cleared because they 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 got on the stand they got up there and said we're not a news network we're an entertainment company we don't have to wow. tell the truth. Wow. What? Y'all thought this was factual, actual stuff? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and got off. Wow. And, and it was it was rude. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I turn on CNN. I see the <sighs> three-dimensional, all the pretty colors. And yeah, they're, they're entertainment. Wow. Don't, don't be coming to us if you want official news. Oh, my God. So let me make sure I understand you. And I'm going to repeat it back. I'm sure that listeners mm -hmm. understand. I'm just making sure I understood you. So CNN was sued by an entity because CNN said something that wasn't correct about this particular entity. CNN went to court, went before a judge, the whole nine yards. CNN's defense was they are an entertainment company, not a news company. Therefore, they cannot be sued by this particular entity. That was that. It. Wow. That is that is the way I heard it. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. That's, okay. That's so, folks, heard, so. you heard it here. CNN is not news. <laughs> <laughs> but I think hey. we kind of already knew that. <laughs> like KFC is not Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, we're just three letters. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Yesterday it stood for Cable News Network. We didn't say that's what CNN stands for today. There you go. Hey, there's their. You got to ask. <laughs> you better probe. You got to change. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So, just, mm -hmm. just, yeah, but yeah, M MSNBC, uh, my statement really about them. All right. And then um, I heard, heard uh, less than a week ago about uh, Chuck Schumer making the statement about Trump's impeachment. And I wanted to look in more about it because he was saying, uh, in February, we're going to start the impeachment of Donald Trump. 
Okay. I want to get this out of the way before Valentine's Day, you know, and I'm going to read some of what some of what it is said. Trump's Senate impeachment trial will start the week of February 8th, Schumer says. Key points. Impeachment trial for former President Donald Trump will start the week of February 8th, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said. The House will start the process by sending its impeachment article on Monday. And then the Senate will have time to confirm President Biden's cabinet members and work on coronavirus relief before the trial starts. Okay. Remind me if I forget, just tell me what any of that has to do with impeachment, why he, why he would even mention that. And then the, the third point is uh, House charged Trump with inciting an insurrection against the government on January 6th. All right. So, first, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to read. I'm going to read a little more of this. Okay. First, I want to say uh, this is a, this is a question to you, Anger. Mm -hmm. Do you think that after the impeachment that Donald Trump is going to get kicked out of the White House? <laughs> Let me just say, with ninety nine point nine percent certainty, I don't think he'll get kicked out of the White House after the impeachment. <laughs> You have to be somewhere to get kicked out of it, right? They would have to <laughs> get in a time machine and go back and put him in there again, right. and and then and then kick him. He, right. He's gone. He's already gone. His stuff, all his stuff, is moved out. Mm -hmm. Yes, Melania and the family. Every everybody's gone. Everybody's in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if he is impeached. The day before he is impeached and the day after, his life won't change one iota. Correct. And and when I say that, I'm also saying that he can run for president in 2024. OK, because some people think that <laughs> for him to get impeached because of the bogus article of impeachment, that automatically he's going to be banned from running for president. If he's still over 35 years old, if he was still born in the United States, <laughs> there's nothing that can stop him from running. I mean, right. look, what, what, they're scared. They don't want to let him run and then let the people decide. <laughs> let the people vote. You want to make it so that he can't even get in a race. He might right. actually beat us. Right. And that's what that's the fear. Everybody's eyes are open. Everyone saw what happened at the Capitol. It's just up to people to make up their minds if them breaching the barricades or forcing their way into the building is Trump's fault. If he told them to do that. And I, I, uh, I implore anyone to show us where Trump said for them to come and start a riot. Yes. Instead of just exercising your constitutional right to a peaceful assembly or to protest. Mm -hmm. Come and protest. That's All it. Right. That's it. Yeah. He so, did. Right. Yeah. Right. They're obviously looking at looking at him as a threat. Mm -hmm. And, and that, we go back to the first impeachment. That was a matter of Trump is doing such a great job. He's going to get reelected. Mm -hmm. You know, then the threat was bigger because then you're talking about two terms back to back, not a four year term and then a break and then another term four years later. Mm -hmm. They definitely didn't want him to, you know, to come in and be president right now. It's exactly. He's going to continue exactly. to do great. Look at all these accomplishments. And then, you know, we, we got to we got to do something to stop him. And that's all that this is about. That's all this is about. It's, um, he was doing a great job. He had millions of votes. And um, again, and a lot of people still believe that there is some corruption going on when it comes to voting. I believe there is. You know, and, sure, um, sure. and this particular impeachment, I've heard somewhere that the Chief Justice must preside over, the, over an impeachment. Well, yeah. John Roberts, Chief Justice, decided, no, he's not going to preside over it. Okay. So now the Senate asked, I think it's Patrick Leahy, to preside over it. And first, that's unconstitutional. The Constitution says the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court must preside over it. So by them now going to Patrick Leahy, that's already unconstitutional. 
That's, yeah. that's not part of the Constitution. Now, as of this evening, Leahy's in the hospital for whatever wow. reason. Yeah. So this is how this is going down. So, and then uh, secondly, they say they care so much about the American people and getting them help do- during COVID that they're going back and doing what they did in 2017 to impeach somebody. And now it looks even more ridiculous than it did then because like you said, he's not there anymore. So now you're creating a crisis because you're impeaching a private citizen. So can they come along and impeach you? You're a private citizen. Donald Trump's a private citizen. That's one of the dangers. Yeah. Right. That's one of the dangers in this. And, And never mind that our tax money is being spent for this frivolous action. Right. Right. You know, it's, right. it's again, we're paying for it. We're right. going to pay for it. <laughs> There's time and energy and money being mm-hmm. spent to get rid of a ghost. It's <laughs> trying to catch a mist. Yep. Just so that they can put on a plaque somewhere, a frame in quotation marks, the only president to be impeached twice. Twice. Or That's meaning all. the only guy to be accused twice. Yep. Yes. That's that's all this is. You got the you got the court of public opinion. All right. You got people in America that when they see a guy being walked down uh, in handcuffs to the to the police station, they Purple. already made up in their mind. He's guilty. If he didn't do it, they wouldn't have him up there. Right. Never mm-hmm. mind, it's, you know, innocent mm-hmm. until proven, proven guilty. guilty. It's a visual. It's the visual that they captured upon. And that's what they're trying to right. do capture the visual even though it's a lie it's an absolute lie so um you know they're they're acting outside of the bounds of the constitution and they have been for a while obviously Mm -hmm. and it's got to stop it must stop it has to it has to it's the last frontier the preservation of this constitution yes i'm telling you you, you you chipping away and you separating this stuff and you're you're calling things something that they're not and you're breaking it up and pretty soon America is just a raft that's floating yes. and we're t- trying to hold on to it, what we got you know yeah. trying to hold on to it <laughs> so let me let me uh, read this last thing uh, on on this talking about Schumer so. Schumer added, we all want to put this awful chapter in our nation's history behind us. And then, and then they, they have him quoted as saying, but healing and unity will only come if there is truth and accountability. And that is what this trial will provide. Can you, can you believe this? This guy has the audacity to say truth and accountability. Oh, my goodness. When I, when I read this, I had a visual of a skunk uh, uh, being morphed together with, with a Pinocchio or something. <laughs> like, this guy is stinking. I can smell it from here. He's stinking with no stripe down his tail and his nose is growing mm-hmm. at the same yeah. time. I, I don't get it. And I don't understand how people don't see the hypocrisy in this. Just the blatant, unbridled, breathtaking hypocrisy. Yeah. It's just, you know, and, and it's a shame that folks hate Trump so much that they're willing to go along with this. They can't step right. back and be objective about it at all. And, you know, with the with Biden in, I wonder if the TV stations are going to get the ratings. They were getting the ratings with Trump. They were painting him yeah. to be just evil incarnate. And they were yeah, getting the right. ratings. Now he's gone away. Trump has been quiet this entire time. He yeah. said nothing. And they still can't keep that man's name out of their mouth. It's right. they, they astounding. Won't. They won't. Yeah. They won't. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like a superhero movie has to have a villain. So he got rid of the villain. Now right. how are you going to justify your purpose? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What What are they going to do? I, I guess the, the coronavirus will be the new villain. Somebody can enlarge it since it's microscopic and draw a face on it, put a cape, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Because, you know, I, I don't know. I uh, always hope for the best and uh, America is stronger than any one person. Uh, but we, we know that, that Trump isn't going away. And uh, people are going to, like I said, the media is going to seek him out and, mm-hmm. and ask him what he thinks yes. about about different things that are going on. They will. They absolutely will. 
you know, and to, I guess to piggyback on that um, or segue into something else, mm-hmm. Trump had a platinum plan. I think that's what it called it, what they called it for African Americans in terms right. of helping them with businesses and improving their personal economies and, um, you know, that sort of thing, just getting into that American dream, not just about the house and the car and that sort of thing, but yeah. about businesses and own your own business and getting the funding and that sort of thing. That's what he was offering. You took the plan from um, Ice Cube. They were in discussions and Trump did not ask for an endorsement from Ice Cube for this. He just said, wow, this looks good. Let's do it. Didn't request an endorsement at all from Ice Cube. Fast forward, Trump's no longer in office, and Biden is talking about putting Harriet Tubman on a $20 bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were talking about that a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not, rap- not reparations, yeah. you know, not business um, incentives. Yeah, that's another But that's to another put problem. them on a $20 bill, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. So, yeah, about that, one, one thing is most of the people that are on our money are – presidents ex-presidents mm-hmm. right people that have been with the exception of benjamin franklin right 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 with the exception of franklin and i heard on the million dollar bill the statue of liberty who's never been president you know mm-hmm. so the the uh the clerk at walmart will show you when, when someone paid her with a million dollar bill of course it was fake of course but she she accepted it and then went to the office to try to get changed back <laughs> I don't have enough in my register. <laughs> Maybe she wouldn't have to worry about it if she had those reparations that, you know, folks keep promising. <laughs> she yeah, wouldn't have to yeah. work at Walmart. She had the reparations, her 40 acres and a mule. <laughs> yeah, let's get into that because I've, I've, uh, I've gotten a few other, find out a few other problems that I hadn't even considered about. Reparations. Yeah. Some people are still hoping for that and looking for that like Haley's comet you know we just we just need to quit so it's yes i'm just bringing this up because uh it's still being talked about and uh one thing about reparations is it will create animosity for mm-hmm. people all the all the people that are living and breathing and walking around today wouldn't even feel uh any kind of a disadvantage or slighted if the media and other black organizations and leaders weren't telling them that they've been taken advantage of, Mm -hmm. that they would never think or never know that the, the playing field was what this is about leveling the playing field. This is about payback. I want to be compensated for the pain of something that I didn't experience. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Somebody can go to court and they can get, you know, part of their suit or settlement can be for pain and suffering. They actually went through the pain, you know, of mm-hmm. um, uh, what do you what do you call it? Where you have to go to therapy, right? Go to physical therapy or something right. mm-hmm. and you feel pain and trauma and you go through that. No, no, I want to go. I, I want to be compensated for the pain of some people that. I never knew and didn't know me and it just, it just doesn't work. So exactly the people that are, that suffered that they're gone. They passed on the people who were participants in that have passed on. So it's, (laughs) it it makes no sense. It's they're in the, I don't know, it's fading fast, but the freest country in the nation, in the world, they're in the freest country in the world with mm-hmm. endless opportunities and yet and still you're going to hark back to something 200 years ago to say oh you owe me this seriously T- i mean talking about missing the forest for the trees and not being able to recognize opportunity and then not having the ambition the knowledge or the fortitude to go get it to go after the opportunity uh, um, what what people would spend the money on and then the battle and the struggle to try to control what they spend it on mm-hmm. is is a, a futile battle, right? That's yes. that's another thing. That's an if it really means something to you, like 
I don't know, like, let's say that there was a relative in your family that was in a war and you got their uniform, a part of their uniform or something that symbolizes suffering or whatever that, you know, you you then got ownership of that and then Mm -hmm. you sell it, you sell it, Mm -hmm. you turn it around or you give it away or you 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 liquidate it. So that you can benefit from it. And what I mean by that is people would just put, if you put reparations in the form of cash, which that's not the only way that reparations can be issued out. If you put it in the form of cash and then gave it to people, they would just put that in their regular flow. That would just flow in the river of whatever their income is or the money that they're already getting, meaning they would spend it on the same stuff. That right. they're already spending it on. There right. would be no uh, memorial or anything to remember those people or uh, no- nothing, literally nothing that would that they would use that money for to make the country a better place mm-hmm. or, or make their lives better. Right. And there's right. there's a uh, there's a few examples on on the Internet that can be found of where this was tried before. Once was with the Native Americans, with mm-hmm. President Harry Truman. He actually signed a bill. Let me read a little bit about how how sideways that went. OK, okay. so here we go. Native Americans did not get full control of money awarded to them uh, after World War Two. Congress created the Indian Claims Commission to pay compensation. All right. And then they break this down a little bit. So the results were disappointing for Native Americans. The commission paid out about $1.3 billion, which is a lot more then than it is now. But still, commission paid $1.3 billion, the equivalent of less than $1,000 for each Native American in the U.S. at the time the commission uh, dissolved in 1978. So wow. from the 40s with Truman up to 78, mm-hmm. and then the commission went away. And it's a whole lot less Native Americans in America than it is mm-hmm. black people. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, which can of worms do you want? You know? <laughs> we got Heinz. We got Del Monte. I mean, you know, pick a brand. This just this is we're opening cans of worms. What's your flavor? Because right. the worms are live. Right. And they're gonna, you know, once they once they get out. All right. And it's then uh-huh. uh, uh, <laughs> another another thing about this, I'll throw in, and then you you know you comment if you want to add something, but just. Um, proving, uh, if, if it is any, any black people or anyone of African descent, right? You would have first generation Africans from West Africa coming here, you know, uh, one and wanting to get reparations. Mm-hmm. Well, that's my family. Those are my people. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Joe Rogan said on his show that he's 1% African, 1%. And the rest is Italian and other things. So now we got to pay Joe. I I don't know. Sounds like you might have to. Because they always said if you got, what is it? The one drop. (laughs) Right. You black. (laughs) You black. You know. And then this is what black people do. Because like my mother's side of the family came from France. Mm -hmm. Came from France uh, around 1885. You know, like my great, great grandfather. And then he basically... Uh, uh, his children participated in the, you know, the Creole race that was created mm-hmm. in Louisiana with West Indian and French, mm-hmm. you know, and he, he was he was from France. So, you know, uh, black people tell me none of that matters. You still black. <laughs> you get out here with the rest of us and crawl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, but but <laughs> here's the other thing, another example that I was going to give is that you're going to have one, at least one person or a group of people to go, well, everybody from Africa, that's where civilization started. So if you're a human <laughs> being, we need to get to come on. All of us. How, <laughs> how are you going to measure it? What are they going to have uh, machines that measure the amount of melanin in your skin? You know. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, you want to start a race war? I mean, that's wars the way to started do it. over money. <laughs> that's the way to do it. 
and it, even the guy that doesn't want to fight or go to war with you, the animosity would be unbelievable. <laughs> this guy is busting his behind, you know. <sighs> I'm telling you, it's just it's just a it's just a mess. It it's, is. You know how about how about trying to make the laws fair where people can work? And I've said this before. I want America to be the kind of place where the harder you work, the more you are rewarded. Mm-hmm. Or you you get you get rewarded or you get compensated based on the level of your accomplishments. Mm-hmm. You know that that's going to affect me right now in my living life when I'm walking around more than whatever happened, because we'll never be able to dig up and resurrect. Most of the stories of what happened to people 300, 400 years ago, mm-hmm. some of it is documented, but I'm sure there were horrendous things that happened in my bloodline that I would just, I would never find out about. Now, I could be like Alex Haley and be on a quest for 12 years, put everything else on hold, and then I would find out, you know, I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure I'd be successful in tracing some of my roots and find out a whole lot of stuff that I, I would I would never I would never know. Mm-hmm. It's really it's really not that important to me because I'm I'm living in the now in the moment and I'm thinking about the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where we need to be. I mean, I we can't keep going back. When when is enough gonna be enough? You know, it gets to yeah. the point where you're just looking to make excuses for right. being unsuccessful. I mean, it, when it's all on you. You you make it whatever it is, whatever it needs to be, and whatever it is. Make excuses so. or make money. There you go. What 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 is Al Sharpton's source of income? Like who signs his checks? Like how how does he get? Is he get? Does he make money from donations? I know he's also a preacher, so you know. Well, maybe yeah, he, uh, he he had a radio show Sunday mornings, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, I, I know the collection plate, but then from him being famous, I guess he, I guess he gets a lot of donations. I know? think he does, and he's on that station that you mentioned earlier in the show, MSNBC. I think he has a show on that station. Oh, if yeah. I'm not, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And remember, <laughs> preachers don't have to pay taxes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. Just, just clean it up. Let me get the rake. You know, you had the crap table in Vegas, <laughs> raking the dice and the chips in. <laughs> Breaking it in. This guy got oh multiple breaks, man. <laughs> Absolutely. <sighs> Unfortunately. Oh my goodness. And on that note, do you have any final thoughts for us? Thinking about again what I was saying of Trump, because that's that's still going on now. It is wrong to try to silence him. And uh I would I would like to see him come up with uh with a media company, but um where it's freer than Twitter. Like anybody can get on there. There, there's nothing you can say to get banned. You know, mm-hmm. like him. You know, he's he's able to say what he wants himself, also obviously. But then mm-hmm. let other people come on there. Let uh, let billionaires and entrepreneurs. Let people from the left come on there. Let's have debates. Let's have uh, social media debates. Let's have uh you know, video or just something, make it a mm-hmm. little different or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be a great thing that was birthed out of uh, something that um, that was initially negative. Absolutely. And he would already have the audience built in. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he would already have that. Yeah, that would be interesting. Be interesting to see what he does next. Definitely. Um, to stay out there. To stay out front. And um, this is the founding father's quote for this week this is from um thomas jefferson he said i predict future happiness for americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them so with that thank you for listening to this episode of brutally honest talk radio leave a review leave a five-star review for us wherever you listen to this podcast and don't forget to hit that subscribe button on youtube and um, also hit the little notification button so you'll be aware of when we upload a new episode and with that take care and we'll talk to you next time good night everybody have a great week thank you for listening to brutally honest talk radio 
If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out at BruteHonestRadio at gmail.com. That's B-R-U-T, Honest Radio at gmail.com.